All right, Mike, repeat after me. Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. Clemson. Now you repeat after me. Uh Ole Miss. Auburn. No, Ole Miss. Auburn. Forget it, roll it. Everybody, welcome to In the Red Zone. Sean and Mike here. This is our week two predictions for college football. Very interesting week to start out with week one. Um, it just f- literally wrapped up with Notre Dame and Louisville. That just yeah. finished, so it was late on Monday night. Uh, spreads that we have are as of 5 p.m. Uh, through some various ones because because the Labor Day weekend, the Notre Dame game late, lines aren't coming out, so it's just, you know, it's kind of like a hodgepodge of what's yeah. there. Um, and then at the end, I'll tell you where, I mean, I, I actually – got in on some games early with the spread a lot bigger and yeah. it, I'm glad I did because it's come down and I think I'm set up really good for this week. So um, quickly, um, we'll just briefly mention about this past week, um, some th- key things here. One, I mean, you went 13-9-1, and one. I went 12-10-1, and, and one. Uh, three games that just kill, killed us. Number one, Northwestern. Yeah. I, I mean, fumble the ball with 20 seconds to go, literally the last play of the game, and Stanford recovers in the end zone. Well, I mean, we had that game won. How about, until. How about Auburn? That one. For the Auburn last could have kicked a field seconds. goal and won the game, and we would have been fine. No, <laughs> yeah. he has to throw it. I mean, that. Yeah. And, and let me just briefly mention with that, because uh, we don't have Oregon as one of the games we're picking this week. Cristobal, their offensive coordinator, should be fired. Should be fired. And let me tell you why. Um, I know the guy coaches offensive line. I know he's like one of those rough and tough type of guys. But I'm sorry, how many times? I counted at least three where it's third and one or fourth and one. And you've got C.J. Verdell running up between the guard and the center yeah. to try to get a first down against that defensive line? Yeah. What are you thinking? There is no way. Yeah. There's no way you're getting that one yard. with, with Verdell is a great back, don't get me wrong, but he's small. Yeah. And you're uh, you're – Undersize on the offensive line against that defensive line. What are you thinking? Yeah. You know, you do it once, and Oregon's coach should have came over and grabbed him by the neck and said, stop, just stop. Yeah. And, but no, he did it at least two more times, and I didn't see every single play. It might have happened again, but I just was like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. So there's that, and then there's, uh, I'll briefly, well, we'll talk about Ohio State in a minute, but, uh, and then, you know, it, it was good for you, but for OU, you know, they didn't yeah, cover. I told you. Didn't I, cover. But they would have had they – there was when, – when Houston had 10 points and they ended up scoring a touchdown to go to 17, mm-hmm. twice on that drive, OU's defense had them stopped and yeah. stupid penalties. Yeah, we were texting stupid during penalties. the game. Stupid penalties. I mean – And and at halftime I said, heck? I said, if, if Oklahoma has another half like they just had, I'll be happy. It was like – what twenty one ten at that point, yeah. and and you know forty two to twenty. I would have been okay with yeah. that. It granted, they Houston ended up scoring, but their offense got on a roll. Uh, if you look back on that game, um, you'll see a lot of second teamers or guys that you would consider second and third teamers yep. getting into the game in in the third quarter, and I think that's why you saw. Houston, well, Houston's a good offense. I mean, they've, they've got a really, well, really the, good offense. And they do have a good offense, but I think the most telling part for me, and it may have been backups or whatever, but second half, Houston's offensive line was just blowing OU off yeah. the ball. I mean, just literally the, driving them four yards off. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know that I I would have to go back, and um, it's it's been a long weekend, so I haven't been able to go rewatch the game. So um, that – Defensive line, Neville Gallimore, uh, Marcus Stripling, a guy I said in my OU preview video that um, would come on. Um, Jalen Redman, another guy. These guys are getting, you know, tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to go back and look and see who it was that was, you know, getting blown off. But Houston got in a nice rhythm there in the yeah. second half and, and almost made a game of it. We uh, OU fumbled the ball. Um, Stevenson, their their third back. They were they only had three uh, scholarship running backs mm-hmm. padded up for that game. Uh, T.J. Pledger was out with a, a ligament injury in his hand, and then uh, uh, Marcus Major for some reason wasn't. Uh, he was in street clothes that that game. Um, but well, it, yeah, I will say. OU defense, I'm worried. I, I don't know how much better they're going to be because, one, they got blown off the ball. Two, they, there were times where Houston receivers were open and King yeah. just 
five, ten yards over well, throw, under throw. And he wasn't very accurate. Yeah, so, I you've mean, got you've got guys in the secondary who who are starting for the very first time in their lives. Yeah. Um, I mean, besides maybe at the end of the last year, um, when, when some injuries hit, but. Um, Pat Fields is a guy that started for the first time, I believe, um, in his college career. Okay. Um, you had some some silly, you know, pass interference, some silly calls after. Yeah. Um, we've seen those calls over the last few years. I'm not too worried about it. I do want to see. I love the intensity they came out with to start the game. Yeah. I want to see Murray that played amazing. I want to see that for a, an entire game. I want to yeah. see it, especially on the defensive side. I thought the three and outs. We're, I, I was messaging, you know, my, my OU buddies, just like, "What's a three and out? <laughs> what the well, heck is that? Is that allowed?" <laughs> one last thing, then we'll move on because I know you guys are ready for the picks. One thing I saw uh, post game sound from Alex Wrench. He was not happy because yeah. the defense did not get a single turnover, and yeah. that, he's like, he said. You know, ask an offensive coordinator, are you happy not scoring a touchdown? The answer is no. He yeah. goes, I'm not happy about it. So they're, I mean, he's going to be on him this week. Yeah. So, all right, I, let's... I, I did want to highlight real quick, the uh, the group of five schools showed out, um, and, and some FCS schools. Mm -hmm. Hawaii beats Arizona. Cincy beats UCLA. South Dakota State hangs on with uh, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Nevada beats Purdue. Wake Forest barely beats Utah State. Yep. Portland State within seven of Arkansas. Georgia State beats Tennessee, which is absolutely insane insane yeah. um first time they've lost a home opener yep. since like 83 or something mm -hmm. uh jmu hangs with uh west virginia memphis beats old miss boise state beats florida state north iowa uh takes iowa state to triple overtime and wyoming beats missouri so yeah. give a hand yeah. to hey, the group of parody. five schools it's yeah parody in yeah. college football and and just one little side note here if you didn't notice with wake forest uh wake forest only got one penalty the whole game, and it was a second-to-last play. They lost a cornerback to targeting, yeah. and it, it was kind of one of those. He did drop his head, but he kind of he just he didn't take the guy down. He just he hit the guy, and he just stood there. But he did lower his head, so it's targeting. Second-to-last play, they lose him first half of next week. But it was 183 plays in that game where Lake, Wake Forest did not have a single penalty. That is disciplined football right yeah. there. So hats yeah. off to Wake Forest. All right, let's get into um, week two. We'll get through these. Fairly quickly, we'll try not to hang up on one game in it for too long. Um, we're going to start off Ohio at Pitt. Pitt currently a six-point favorite. This opened with Pitt as a, as an eight-point favorite. Uh, I got in on it as seven, and yeah. then it dropped to six. I think the number is going to continue to drop during the week um, and might get down to four, maybe three. Yeah. I think more money is going to go to Ohio. They're undervalued. They're not. Uh, they're really good. Nathan Ward, senior quarterback. That kid is amazing. Pitt played Virginia incredibly well. Yeah. It was close. Virginia, one of them expected to be in the ACC championship game against Clemson. Um, but at the end of the day, um, Kenny Pickett had a 20, he was 21 of 41, uh, 185 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, um, with uh, 4.5 yards per attempt. Um, that's not amazing. You know, you'd, you'd want to see those interceptions get dropped down. Um, you know, you don't want any more than really yeah. none a game, but one, yeah. you know, there's going to be one every once in a while. Well, I so. took, I, I, I actually, when I got in at seven, I went, I took Ohio. I'll still take Ohio at six. I, I really think um, Ohio can outright win the game. I won't be shocked at all if they win the game. So a six-point spread, I have, I'll take the Bobcats. Yeah, Ohio let Rhode Island pass for 291 yards. That's a little concerning. Um, but then again, Pitt didn't really show too much in the passing game. I'm going to take Pitt just because it's at Pittsburgh. Um, it's there at Heinz Field. Um, it'll be a big game uh, atmosphere. So I'm going to take the home team in this one just because it's dropping so low. Little history of bringing this up 15 years ago. Ohio played Pitt at Ohio. Um, I'm an Ohio alumni alum, so I know. And that was uh, Frank Solich's first year. And... I think Ohio was like a 30-point underdog, took him to overtime, and in overtime got a pick six and, to win the game. Nice. And uh, Dave Wonstadt was the coach at Pitt at the time, mm. and that was Solich's first year, and that really kind of got the ball rolling for the Solich era. So uh, 15 years later, here they are again, this yeah. time at Pitt's place. But uh, I, I think Ohio's going to win that game. Okay, let's move on. Cincinnati um, at Ohio State. Ohio State is a 16-point favorite. It's opened at 18 and a half. It's come down. I got in at 17. Um, I have said, I've, it was my prediction, 
that Cincinnati was probably going to upset Ohio State. Um, I'll certainly take them in the points for yeah. sure. And I think that number is going to come down because money's going to go on Cincinnati. I, quick observations. Um, the highlights, everything you've seen in the media has all been about Justin Fields, five total TDs responsible for. Yes, the kid had a good game, but I'm going to point something out. Ohio State came out on a roll and scored 28 points in the first half of the first quarter. Yeah. For the last three and a half quarters, FAU beat Ohio State 21 to 14. So Ohio State's offensive line had some problems. Their secondary has a lot of problems. I know that uh, Florida Atlantic only threw for about 220 yards or something yeah. like that, but there were open receivers that Robinson missed. There were um, there's holes in that secondary, huge holes. Cincinnati is light years better than FAU, yeah. both on offense and defense. And I'm telling you, I know people want to overlook it, and I know Ohio State fans want to just rip me for this, but Cincinnati's dangerous and. You know, hopefully the Buckeyes can clean things up in a week. But I saw a lot of issues there that I I knew they were going to have coming into the season, and I think uh, Cincinnati and Luke Fickle is going to be able to exploit that. Yeah, I won't I won't judge them too much based off of what happened later on in the game because you get up so high in the in the beginning of the game that the rest mm-hmm. of the game I see Oklahoma do it all the time is. They just and Alabama does it. Um, that you know, it's it's why Tua was able to come out of the game so many times last year. It's just that you get up so high and then you're just in prevent mode the rest of the game. You want to get your guys. If if you have a comfortable lead, you want to get those other guys to build depth in certain positions that you need to build depth. So um, I won't come down on him too hard for that. I do think that Cincy will cover um, just because of how tough they looked. And I know UCLA. Um, I just don't think they're there. I, yeah. I don't know if Chip Kelly will get them there. I, yeah. I, I honestly don't know. Um, we'll have to see if they're able to give him time to, uh, you know, get some of his recruits in there and stuff. But Cincinnati, you know, they looked really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is just one of those years that's their kind of year. So mm-hmm. um, I think they make a game of it, and I think they um, they – Bring it pretty close. I mean, watch this be a game that Justin Fields just has, you know. Nah, I mean, <laughs> three and three touchdown yeah. passing, three touchdowns rush. But we'll see. I mean, um, I think that Cincinnati's good enough to to at least hang with them. Justin, I don't know that they'll beat them. I will just say that Justin Fields. You know, I've been kind of critical of him. Didn't think he would. He looked really good against FAU. Um, so he's just going to get better and better. Yeah. So I mean, I was wrong about that. I'll admit that I was wrong about him. I was right about the secondary and the offensive line and things like that, whether you guys want to agree with me or not. But um, So anyway, that's what it is. You got Cincinnati yep. in the points. I got Cincinnati in the points. Okay, let's move on. South Dakota um, at Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a 36.5 point favorite. This game is one of those games every year OU has a game that's on pay-per-view because they just play somebody that... They have to. They have yeah. a, a contract that they yeah. have to have one pay-per-view game. A well, year. I'll tell you what. Jaylen It'll Hurts, be brought to you by like Fox or ESPN. Right. Jalen Hurts looked amazing. Yeah. I mean, he just looked amazing. Uh, he's using his legs a lot more than I, than I think his arm. And I think by doing that, I don't think the c- touchdowns come as quick as what they have yeah. in the last couple of years, but they'll still come. Uh, it's, it all comes down to that defense. But honestly, Oklahoma shouldn't have any problems with San Diego. Yeah. Or San, uh, South Dakota. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. Hurts is going to, no pun intended, but he's going to hurt a lot of teams with his legs. Yeah. He just will. I mean, the guy... And I was talking about this earlier today. Um, he has an ability to change directions. Uh, just, and I don't want to say quicker than Kyler Murray because nobody could scramble like Kyler, Kyler Murray. But yeah. he does something different than Kyler Murray in that he's running one way, and he's got a defender right in front of him, and he just in a split second oh, changes he, directions. And it, you're just, my, there, my mind was blown. He had one play where he did that. He cut up and instantly just, to, and it. I was like, that's Barry Sanders. Like, yeah, I mean, he it is incredible so, how he was able to it's, cut. It's it's the power in his legs, and yeah. you saw him. Uh, I hope he doesn't blow out a knee. If, down. <laughs> if you watched, well, if his legs are as strong as they are, yeah. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't expect that. But sure. um, there was one play where he goes, you know, runs to the edge and and runs to the corner of the end zone and just kind of jumps through because mm-hmm. he was expecting yeah. to hurdle a guy. Yeah, um, the guy just happened to stay up and put hands on him. And I mean, he looked like he could have jumped like two guys yeah. there. I'm, that's a little bit of an overreaction, but yeah. um, a lot better. It, it, 
I will just say what was unexpected was the amount he ran. I wish he would hang in the pocket a little bit more, and I think he will in the second half. I think he did kind of hang in there. His first instinct was to run when he felt, and the guy had eyes on the back of it. I don't know how he detected those uh, defensive ends, you know, coming around the edge like that, but um, offensive line has to get better, but South Dakota lost to Montana, uh, 31 to 17. I don't think that this is any kind of uh, no. worry at all. Um, Oklahoma has UCLA the next week in Los Angeles. I don't know that they're going to be looking too far ahead to that game. Um, I think we see Mordecai come in pretty early, and yeah. I think they get a chance. They're going to get Rattler in in the I fourth hope quarter I do. I hope because they do. he's got four games he can play. You might as well get him in there yeah. if you can, especially I'll be if you at the think game, he's here. So your, hopefully yep. Rattler gets in and we get to see so him. So do you have him. OU covered? I do have OU covered. Yeah, yes. I do too. I was a little worried only because of the fact I think the subs are going to play so early that that might slow things down. But it I could. I'm going to take that. I will mention one other thing. OU came out on fire. If you saw the game, if you saw the first offensive possession, defensive possession, you're like, man, they're going to win 77 to nothing. Every team that I saw this week kind of did that. FAU did it with Ohio State. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, you saw Ohio State come out, play offense and defense. You're like, wow, this one's done already. But it wasn't. And teams settle down and they start playing, yeah. especially in the second half. And uh, so a little bit of what we saw from every team this week has been a little bit deceiving because yeah. I think they're going to fix some mistakes. Well, I mean, and two, you, when you're up so much, yeah. you don't want to show your hand to the next few sure. teams you're playing. So... Yeah. You know, kind of close up the playbook, run the same stuff that's working for you. If you have to yep. make an adjustment, make an adjustment within that that scheme. Yep. Um, but there's no reason if you're up by a comfortable margin, unless it starts getting dicey, that you start pulling out, you know, blocking schemes, sure. rushing schemes that, that you don't necessarily have to use until a yep. game that's later on. Okay, let's move on. we got a lot of games here. Army is at Michigan. Michigan is a 23-point favorite here. Uh, Michigan got their win against Middle Tennessee State. That was kind of scary for them in the first half. It yeah. wasn't, you know, that Middle Tennessee State wasn't as easy as Michigan, I think, thought. Yeah. Army did not play near what I thought they would. Yeah. They are not the same Army team from last year, yeah. clearly. Um, I've got Michigan covering. I do, too. Um, Shea Patterson was 17-29. Uh, that could be better. 203 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Michigan will need to stop the rushing atta mm -hmm. attack of Army um, it, because Army's going to be another – it's going to be another year where you see Army at the top of the list of, yeah. of rushing, uh, you know, total rushing um, for offense. So, but if there's a team in the Big Ten besides Ohio State that mm -hmm. can stop a rush attack, it's Michigan. I mean, I yeah. know they replaced a ton on defense, but Don Brown, I mean, th this yeah. is, you know, he's he's done it before. Yeah. So Okay. I've Next game, Michigan. Syracuse is a one-point favorite at Maryland. Maryland hangs 79 on Hampton. I know it's Hampton, but Hampton's quarterback is DeAndre Francois from Florida State. Um, Maryland looked explosive. There were, there were like a handful of teams that came out and played the way they should play yeah. this week. There's just a few of them. Maryland was one of them. I mean, just lights out. Penn State was one of them. LSU was one of them. Um, just took care of business the way they're supposed to take care of business. Um, I, I love Syracuse. I've been big on Syracuse yeah. and everything. At Maryland... Um, this game opened at three and a half. Mm -hmm. I got in on it at two and a half. I'm glad I did because I took Maryland two and a half. I'm still going to take Maryland at plus one because yeah. I think Maryland wins the game. I do too. Um, it's it's at Maryland, um, College Park there. Uh, Maryland held Howard to uh, 68 total yards. Is it Howard? I yeah. thought it was Hampton. I've got Howard, Howard here. Okay. Yeah, I, I messed up. I'm sorry. So, so, uh, Howard, so they held him to one yard rushing. One yard. One yeah. yard rushing. 79 to nothing. Josh Jackson in at QB for Maryland, if you remember. Yeah. He was at Virginia Tech um, for his freshman. His freshman year wasn't bad for a freshman. Yeah. Just shy of 3,000 yards. Um, and I said, it, too, in our preview, when, when Maryland's healthy, they're dangerous. Yeah. The problem is, they ever, the last three years, they've had so many injuries yeah. getting in the season. Well, they so. had a quarterback, um, I forget his name, but they had a quarterback the last few years that, that played Texas um, the first year and then got injured. Um, mm -hmm. And that guy was a almost like a run first quarterback. That that so that first year when they when they beat Texas, they they finished the game with their third string quarterback. Yeah. 
and won that game. Yeah. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I don't know if he ever came back, but um, Josh Jackson can throw the ball. I mean, he's, mm-hmm. he hovers around about 60% um, accuracy. He was about 59% his freshman year, 62%. He either got replaced or injured. I, I wasn't too high on watching Virginia Tech last year, but um, but he transfers to uh, Maryland there and threw for 62% in uh, their game against Howard. Um, and another note is Tommy DeVito is not Eric Dungy. I mean, no, the, Syracuse not, is no. going to miss Eric Dungy. Yeah. Um, but and, Syracuse is still going to be hard to beat at home. Right. So. Right. And it's their their run game. They had 192 yards and three touchdowns yeah. um, in their last game. Uh, but DeVito threw two interceptions. Maybe that's why the run game was was a little bit more mm-hmm. prevalent in that. Um, in that game, but he's got to get better. I mean, yeah. he just has to. If they want to be the second best team in their division in the ACC, there. I mean, who's gonna who's gonna compete with Clemson if they can't? Right. You know exactly. So um, we'll see if Miami can. But that's another story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 600 total yards for Maryland. Five touchdowns through the air. Five touchdowns rushing, and that's that's a well balanced offense yeah. right there. Absolutely. So I've got Maryland to cover. Okay. Uh, next game, West Virginia. Win, actually, West Virginia is at Missouri. Uh, Missouri is a 14 and a half point favorite. Missouri lost to Wyoming. Was it Wyoming? Yes. Missouri lost to. And then uh, West Virginia struggled with James Madison, which yeah. I said they would. Uh, James Madison's a great FCS team. Uh, but Austin Kendall had a great day throwing the ball. His stats at least looked good. I, uh, that game was not televised, so didn't get to watch it. So yeah. I don't. I don't have a clue. I wish I could have watched it because I would. I, I judge it. I start when I evaluate teams and I make my picks. I start by looking at the offensive line, and that's something that you can't get by Googling stats or doing whatever. you got to watch the game because it all starts with offensive line, and I, I like to see how they match up, how, how they're playing, how they're gelling. Uh, so a lot of my picks come from that. So yeah. anyway, so I didn't get a chance to watch West Virginia. Just, all I could do is look at the stats. Yeah. I don't really like going by that. Um, I think Kelly Bryant gets better. I think Missouri is, is just probably going to be a better team. Yeah. 14 and a half is, is pretty big, but it's at Quite Missouri, so I'll take Missouri to cover that. I think it's going to take Austin Kendall a while um, if he ever does become a good quarterback. He played okay, um, but not anything that really jumps off the page to you. West Virginia had 34 yards total rushing, and that concerns me. Missouri is usually a pretty good run-stopping team, Mm -hmm. um, but they also gave up quite a bit to Wyoming, so... It's, this one's kind of tough, but I just, based off of, you know, the the offensive attack, I, I've got to go with uh, Missouri, Missouri on this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one, Vanderbilt is at Purdue. Purdue is a seven and a half point favorite, which Purdue lost to Nevada. And then uh, Vanderbilt played Georgia and, you know, Georgia won by a, a good bit, but really I watched a lot of that game and I, I'll admit I didn't watch any of the Purdue game. I mean, there's only so many games you can watch, yeah. but I watched the Vanderbilt, Georgia, most of that game. Uh, and Vanderbilt held their own. I mean, they're you know they they're not bad. Yeah. They're really not bad. I and you know I saw the highlights of Purdue. I I I, kind of, I really thought they'd be a lot more explosive. Yeah. Um, I didn't think there any were, way Nevada was going to beat them. I thought yeah. Rondell Moore would be. I mean know. that was a. I mean Nevada's kicker gets a scholarship off of making yeah. the the yeah. field goal at the end of the game there. Yeah. So, um, I did watch a lot of that Purdue game. Rondell Moore just he looks like. He'll be in New York, you know, mm-hmm. uh, come January, December for the, uh, at least as a finalist for the Bilitnikoff. I think Jerry Judy's kind of penciled in there as yeah. as a shoe in. Yeah, but, and he played but, an amazing game but too. But so. Rondell Moore, I mean, the guy is so fast. Yeah. I mean, they've got him on kick. It, it's almost like every time they kick the ball to him, you almost think he's going to take it to the house every single time. Yeah. I mean, so I'd like to think that Purdue kind of flashed a little bit more in their good times than Vanderbilt did. But again, I mean, you get overpowered by a team like Georgia, and it's hard to, to even move the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the game starts slipping out of your hands really quickly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I know that the, another thing that kind of worries me, and if they can get it under control, I think that they could win this game um, very handily, but Purdue had five turnovers, two interceptions yeah. and three fumbles, and Vandy only had one. Yeah. So, uh, and that was one fumble. So, yeah, this is a tough game to pick just because of of that um, that one thing that just yeah. kind of 
It, well, Purdue it, doesn't really have a quarterback. The yeah. reality of it, they don't. And if they're turning the ball over like that, you know, the last couple of years they've started with a quarterback and they made a switch because they just can't. They don't have anybody to protect the what's ball. What's their uh, what, What's their quarterback's name? Um, I it, forget it. He was a he. They starts with an S, but he actually threw for. He was, I think, top five this week for uh, for. And a lot of that has to do with Rondell Moore just throwing a, a screen yeah. pass, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, he had. What like a top five in somebody will have to tell me, it's bl I'm blanking on it right now. But um, he had like top five or top ten in passing yards this week. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if they can keep doing the same thing, I think that they can they can get this the seven and a half this week. Taking, I will take Purdue in this. I'm gonna take Vanderbilt. I just think that um, Vanderbilt will overpower them. Um, I know they got that spread, but I just think Vanderbilt Vanderbilt may, probably won't win the game. They might not win the game. But I think they can keep it within a touchdown. So yeah. I'm going to take Vanderbilt. Central Michigan is at Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a 34 and a half point favorite. That has went up since it opened. Um, so big number there. Jonathan Taylor looked amazing. Looked like a Heisman candidate, yeah. Heisman finalist in his first game, uh, doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, Central Michigan is just really bad this year. They're not yeah. very good this year. Uh, I'm going to take Wisconsin. It's a big number. Um, yeah. You hate to kind of take a team that's a predominantly running team. And Wisconsin's got that that young quarterback that they're playing after Hornybrook transferred. But at the end of the day, I just think they're going to be way too much. Yeah. Them. Central Michigan was pretty balanced on offense this week. Uh, they're usually good for, you know, at least one NFL draft pick, yeah. you know, every couple of years or so. Um, but I just, Jonathan Taylor is the real deal. I yeah. mean, he is it, it just give the dope Walker award to him yeah. right now, yeah. you know, cause he, yeah. He'll be there, um, and I just don't think that I don't think that uh, Central Michigan. It's at Camp Randall. I don't think that Central Michigan will will have an answer I don't for either. Wisconsin. Okay, uh, Nebraska is a five point favorite at Colorado. Um, Nebraska. I'll just tread lightly. I won't say a whole lot. But Adrian Martinez did not get a um, a touchdown last week. No. Yeah. Um, I think they had two on defense, or they, they had, had three non-offensive touchdowns. Yeah, they had to lean on their their special teams and their defense to. And South Alabama is not very good. I mean, yeah. they're projected to be at the bottom of the Sun Belt, and I, I was just really shocked. I really, yeah. with all the hype that's been around Nebraska, I just thought, you know, they're going to come out, they were going to do well on offense, and they didn't. They struggled against South Alabama. They got to go up in the mountains in Colorado to play this one. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm taking Colorado in this one. Yeah, um, Nebraska's defense played really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, they had nine tackles for loss. That kind of jumps off the page for me. Um, That's a big improvement from last year because they weren't very good on defense yeah. last year. And, you know, Nebraska is one of those teams that, that, yes, they are returning their starting quarterback who's supposed to, you know, just start or at least be well, a, he one was, of the better. He, he was supposed to be a Heisman candidate right. to start the but season. But if you remember... Nebraska doesn't return very much production on right. offense. I mean, they're, I think their leading rusher yeah. uh, either graduated or moved on. Um, well, their they're, they're, leading receiver moved on. Well, so. their, their fans think they have the best receiving core in college football. So I mean, it, it could be good, <laughs> Sorry, but it, I might, had to say it, that. it <laughs> might take some time, you know. And, and I will tread lightly here because Nebraska has some of the best fans, I'll they say. They do. They do. They have some of the classiest fans, but at the end of the day, this is football and this is a mm -hmm. game. Um, it, it's hard to play, you know, in the mountains of Colorado. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know where the elevation sits at there um, in Boulder, but I'm going to take Nebraska. I'm going to give them one more shot here. Okay. I'm going to uh, because uh, Colorado played Colorado State, and usually every year Colorado State's not very good. So yeah. uh, don't let that number deceive you how much they beat their uh, in-state rival there. Okay, Could be like Oklahoma playing Tulsa. Next game: New Mexico State at Alabama. Alabama is a 54-point favorite. As long as we've been doing this, I've never seen a spread that big. Yeah. Uh, but New Mexico That's State's huge. not very good at all. I know. And what, what Alabama did to Duke, I'll take Alabama to cover. I mean, they don't cover very often, but they've got to cover this. I know. It, and how much did, did Nevada get beat this last week? Nevada? Or New Mexico State. New Mexico State, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, it was... I don't know. I don't. I don't it was exactly insane. It was. It I was texted crazy. to you yeah. earlier today. It was. It was in the fifties. Yeah. Um. And it was by Washington State. So Washington State's got a good passing attack. Yeah. Um. They've got an. It looks like they've got another quarterback that's going to throw for five hundred yards a game. This <laughs> is one of those New Mexico State. 
throwing all their players under the bus, literally, just to get yeah. a paycheck. So, yeah. you know, that's all so this is. So, I, I will, this is a crazy number, um, just because it's it's the highest that I remember seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, there could be another one we, we've seen, but um, yeah. not, I don't know. This, this just jumped off the page. I will take Bama, just because... New Mexico State might not even score a point. That's yeah. I mean, Duke couldn't. They yeah. they got three points. But yeah. I mean, okay. Let's move on to Coastal Carolina at Kansas. Uh, Kansas is an eight and a half point favorite. They opened as a ten point favorite. I got in on it and got them at ten points. Um, it has come down since then. Uh, I watched all the Kansas game week one. I, I I've been intrigued with Kansas with Les Miles. I just wanted to see. And he thinks they're ready they to like. win the national championship. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> No, but I did have somebody message me uh, through our YouTube channel today that they are a student at Kansas, and they just said that the, the mentality of the players in class and the, how aggressive and just how excited they are now that they have less miles is just completely different from what it's been the last two yeah. years, which I thought that's what it was going to happen. Um, they, they looked, to me, amazing on defense. I thought they were flying to the ball. They were making tackles, no missed tackles, no arm tackles. Um, Indiana State was not getting hardly any yardage after the catch. Their defense, to me, looked great, uh, and they had a defensive touchdown. Um, offense, different story. Uh, offense did not look good at all, struggled. The one bright note was after Indiana State eventually scored and Kansas was down, I thought, well, there goes my pick because I didn't think their offense could score, and their offense went right back down the field and scored a touchdown to win the game. Yeah. And so um, – I still think Kansas can get the six wins this year. I yeah. do believe that. I do believe that they are going to win this, and I am going to go ahead and take them to cover eight and a half. Um, but it could be another close game. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I took them. I put money down at 10, so I obviously would take them at eight and a half. Yeah, I'll take them at eight and a half. The, these were in the past games that um, you really wouldn't want to bet on, you right. know, in the past yeah. few years. But less miles, you know. He's got a national championship that that accounts for something. Not saying that Kansas is going to win one anytime soon, but um, I do think that Kansas maybe can win a couple of Big 12 games this year and um, get it rolling and see if they can get them back to where Mangino had them. So, Mm -hmm. um, not I I didn't see any of Coastal Carolina this last week, so I didn't either. I can't really comment on that. I just know that you know. Kansas is trying to work towards something right here. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And so and it, 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 every game you know, counts at this point. So. And, and they know, I mean, when you're rebuilding, these games that you're supposed to win, you got to win. Yeah. You just got to go win. Because they're, they're, so. they're games that they were not. I mean, right. losing to uh, you know, teams like Liberty and stuff, yeah. you know, no offense to But to they would turn around and there, play a, you know, a touchdown game against Texas you know, yeah. or something like that. Or, you know, they, uh, OU only beat them by 15 last year. So, yeah. I mean, it's... You never know. I mean, but I think they're going in the right direction. Was Puka Williams back? I don't. I don't know if he got. I know he got arrested and then charges yeah. dropped or something, and so he was in some trouble. But yeah. I'm not quite sure if he was. Playing. So you're going to take Kansas. I'm going to take Kansas. All right. Yeah. Next game. UCF is a ten and a half point favorite at Florida Atlantic. Um. I'll take. I mean, UCF is going to be right there with Cincinnati as one of the best teams in America. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take UCF to cover that. But Florida Atlantic is not bad. Yeah. Their offense with Chris Robinson at quarterback can actually move the ball. Uh, I, if you, it doesn't matter what you feel or think about Lane Kiffin. He is a good offensive coach. Yeah. So um, this game could be close. Um, I am going to reluctantly, because we have to make a pick, I'm going to reluctantly take UCF to cover the 10 and a half. If I miss this pick, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's yeah. Just put it that way. Um, it seems like we're always wrong with, with UCF. Um, you know, when we pick them to cover, they don't. Mm-hmm. When, we, when we don't pick them, they do. Um, you know, they did win 62 to nothing against, uh, who did they play? Florida A&M. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, they did have 356 yards through the air. Um, with with uh, Brandon Wimbush as their quarterback starting out, and then they obviously moved to their second string quarterback. Um, so they had a lot through the air. They had a lot on the ground. They're very well balanced. Josh Heupel is going to have them very well balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a good coach. Um, I'll, I'll say that they do cover because it just like I said, every time we pick them yeah. not to cover, they they end up covering. Yeah. So um, I think this will be another. 
good year for them, mm -hmm. and uh, I, let's get it, keep rolling. Okay. Next game, uh, love this game. I hope I get to watch it. North Texas at SMU. SMU is a four-point favorite. North Texas is a dangerous football team, a very good football team. SMU has Shane Bichelle transferred in from Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be pretty decent. Um, I don't even know if these two teams played in week one because I, I didn't see them if they did. I didn't get to watch their games if they played. Um, so all I know is I was looking at this game from the get-go, you know, yeah. a couple weeks ago as being a great one. Um, I'm taking North Texas in the plus four. That game hasn't moved since it opened. Um, and I actually put money down on North Texas for at plus four, so give me North Texas. Yeah, and SMU, just to recap this last week, they beat Arkansas State 37-30. to 30. Shane Bouchelle went 30 of uh, 49, 360 yards through the air, and one interception, no touchdowns. So that kind of, that's a little concerning that you throw for that many and then you just can't get it in yeah. the end zone. Um, and then I'm pretty sure, yeah, North, Te North Texas beat Abilene Christian 51 to 31. Um, and they were 383 through the air, 192 on the ground, four touchdowns through the air, one interception. I'll take North Texas in that, um, just because Mason Fine, yep. um, you know, was able to capitalize. Mm -hmm. So even though he had the yards as well, he did have one interception, but, um, his QBR was 86.5. Um, and then they, they were able to, to run the ball. Uh, they didn't lose the ball. They didn't fumble the ball at all. Um, and they had a, let's see, Nick Harvey, he's a senior, uh, had 14 total uh, tackles in that game, 11 solo. So look for him to be a bright spot on the uh, defense there. Give me a North Texas. North Texas, that, okay. You know. BYU is at Tennessee, Tennessee. A three-point favorite, despite coming off that loss to Georgia State, which um, the final score was 38-30, but that's because Tennessee scored literally scored in the last yeah. last possession, like last play. I mean, it really wasn't that close. I mean, it was embarrassing. The, yeah. the as bad as they got beat at home. Um, so, you know, I the problem is I watched BYU play Utah, yeah, and BYU hung in for a little while. BYU has a, a decent defense, but their offense couldn't do anything. Yeah. And I know it's Utah, and Utah's expected to be one of them that might win the Pac-12. You yeah. know, Certainly expected to be in the Pac-12 championship game against Oregon or Washington. So, um, you know, there's there's kind of some give and take there. And then you got Tennessee giving up 38 to Georgia State. I mean, so can BYU muster some offense against Tennessee? Um, I've been back and forth with this. I just think Tennessee – to me, it's still a dumpster fire that is nowhere near back to being what yeah. they used to be. Uh, I'm going to reluctantly, I was going to take Tennessee. I'm going to flip, and I'm going to take BYU in the plus three. I'm going to take BYU, too. I don't like the number, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it was flipped to... This is not a game I would put money on. Uh, yeah. I just wouldn't. It's it, You know, you wonder if that loss to, to Georgia State is going to affect the fan base at all. Um you know, Neyland Stadium is is one of the loudest in the country mm -hmm. um, in, in all of college football. So, I don't know. It's, I would have this, loved this to have listened tough. to Knoxville radio, sports radio after that game. Yeah. Just to hear oh, what they, they, they were probably, because every year they're very high on themselves. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. a very proud yeah. and confident fan base. So, um, it's tough. I've got BYU marked down here, and I'm going to stick with my gut and take BYU. Okay. Next game, Buffalo is at Penn State. Penn State is a 28-and-a-half point favorite. Penn State obliterated Idaho. Yeah. Like, they scored 79, was it? Yeah. Yes, it was like, wow. I mean, and somebody had commented before the game. They said, you guys not giving Penn State the respect. Just wait till you see that offense. Well, I know it's Idaho, but you know what? Penn State's one of those teams that went out and did what they're supposed to do against yeah. a smaller school, and they, yeah. you know. So, um, I, you know, Buffalo is – they lost a receiver that transferred. They've, uh, I think they have a new quarterback. Um, they, they're usually up there in the MAC, but you know, Penn State's Penn State. Yeah, I'm going to take Penn State to cover the 28 and a half. I don't think what happened against Idaho is a fluke. I think they really do have a great offense. What, weren't they really pretty good last year, Buffalo? Yeah, like they were. Uh, they were undefeated for. I think it was last year they were. I could be completely wrong. No, they, really they've, Buffalo. the last couple of years, they've been one of the best yeah. teams in the MAC, yeah. competing with Ohio. And I'm going to ride so. the high of Penn State this week and, and take the 28 and a half. Okay, Western Michigan 
at Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State is a 16 and a half point favorite. Michigan State against Tulsa, I will say Michigan State's probably got the best defense in the Big Ten. I will hands down yep. say that, but their offense is terrible. Lewerke is not their quarterback. That's not that's he's not an answer at, yep. at quarterback. Uh, to be honest, 16 and a half. I mean, Western Michigan is going to be one of the better teams in the MAC. They have the best offensive line in the MAC. They're going to have an explosive offense, and I think they can put up some points against Michigan State. I don't think they beat Michigan State, but there's yeah. no way that Michigan State is going to cover that. And so I'm going to take Western Michigan in the points. Yeah. And I did put money on that game and took Western Michigan. I'm going to take Michigan State in this one. Um, we've got to have a couple that are okay. that are different, <laughs> but uh, it's it's in East Lansing, uh, Michigan State. Again, we said it in the beginning of the year. They'll have one of the be- better uh, defenses in the Big Ten because they didn't have as many holes to fill. Um, it, they didn't have as many positions that they needed to fill on, mm-hmm. on defense. Or really, I think they had some guys return on offense too. But um, I'm going to take it just because their defense is, is really good. And I, okay. I don't know that Western Michigan can um, you know, okay. do much. Okay. Uh, Arkansas is at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a seven-point favorite. Arkansas struggled, beat Portland State. Um, Ole Miss lost to Memphis. Memphis is a good team. You can't. That's not a. You know, yeah. it's not a bad loss when you lose to Memphis. Um, it's at Ole Miss. Um, seven points. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Arkansas's offense didn't to me didn't look that great. Yeah. Um, and then their defense. You know, it's Portland State, so you don't really know. Ole Miss played a tough team. Um, I've been back and forth with this one. I, um, I'll take Ole Miss in the points. I will take Ole Miss as well. If there's another team in the SEC that's annually as bad as uh, or worse than yeah. than Ole Miss. I mean, Ole Miss has had some good years, yeah. um, but just Arkansas to me just does not have it together. No. This could be whoever wins this could be the only SEC win for that yeah. team. Whoever wins it. Yeah. So, but I'll take Ole Miss to cover the seven. All right, Miami is a six point favorite at North Carolina. North Carolina, Mac Brown gets his first win. Uh, over South Carolina was kind of, was a shocker to me. I didn't think I really didn't think that would happen. Yeah. I just didn't. I thought South Carolina was better than yeah, that. I did too. This is week one. You don't know what's going to happen. Teams play bad. They might recover. Uh, there's no reason to think that every team that played terrible is going to play terrible in week two. Yeah. Um, Miami. I'll just say this. I, I here it goes. I mean, they're going <laughs> to the fans are going to get on. You're going to think we're picking on you. I'm not we're picking not. on Miami. I will say Miami's against Florida. Their defense was phenomenal. Yeah. I think Miami has one of the best defenses in college football, but they absolutely have the worst offensive line in college football, bar none. That that offensive line stunk. I mean, stunk. Jared Jaron Williams is going to be a good quarterback. Yeah, he's going to be better than what I gave credit for initially so i will admit that i was wrong with that but if they don't have anybody can block for him yeah then he i mean he's going to struggle and he struggled against florida and it's because he didn't have any time and yeah. so and you know what i don't north carolina's defense played pretty decent against south carolina and yeah. south carolina is good competition i don't think miami can win this game yeah. i mean I, I give give me north carolina yeah we'll have to see what uh what uh five star wide receiver tate martell does in this game because <laughs> yeah I can't keep a straight face with that. Uh, he did play a wide receiver, so yeah, he did. He took snaps. A lot he of played. people told us that he wasn't. So. And everyone kept telling us like they're so deep at wide receiver. Martel will never get. On. Well, he got on the field, so it must yeah. not be too deep at wide yeah. receiver. So um, we don't want to pick you on you. I I okay. swear we're not picking on you. Um, okay. But I will take North Carolina in this. I just thought that they they look better week one than uh, Miami did week zero. Um, I know Florida didn't cover, so we didn't get the well, win on that one. We haven't, and you know, we haven't talked about them, but uh, Felipe Franks is horrible. Yeah, he is. He's terrible. Yeah. He's terrible at quarterback, and he is not their answer. And and so if he if he remains their quarterback all year, Florida has no chance at the SEC. East. Yeah, Florida so. was trying to give that that game away. Yeah, they were. I mean, I know we, we didn't. We haven't recapped on that at all, but. Yeah. Um, Florida was was trying to give that game away. Absolutely. I mean the the pass interference calls on that and um, but anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. All that said, give me North Carolina. It's in Chapel Hill. Okay. Um, just based off of what we've seen. So Next far. game, Stanford at USC. USC is a three and a half point favorite. As far as I know, I know J T Daniels is out ACL. He's down for the year. I believe uh, Costello's out, a quarterback for Stanford. Yeah. I think it was concussion. If I'm wrong, tell me, guys. I mean, it's early in the week. We have a whole week to go. 
things could change. Maybe he does play. Right now, we're going to pretend we're going to act as if he's not playing. Yeah. Um, this game did not really had to search and search for some odds because nobody was putting out anything on this game. Uh, found that it was three and a half for USC. Um, I will say that USC's backup quarterback came in and did a pretty decent job. Yeah. He didn't do too bad. Um, Stanford really, really struggled with Northwestern. That was just an ugly game. Yeah. Um, and Stanford's one of those for the past two years since we've been doing this. They screw us more often than not. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take USC to cover three and a half. Yeah, there's one team in every conference that we yeah. just can't, can't get, get our right. finger on. Yeah. And Stanford's that. Um, at three and a half in Los Angeles um, or in USC territory, yeah. um, I'll take USC in that one. It's yeah. a it's a tough one when you lose your quarterback, mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing anything on KJ Costello. They probably won't um, release anything till later on in the week. Um, no. But if he's if he's in concussion protocol, uh, he's not playing this week. So right. um, new quarterbacks for each team, and we'll see yeah. how that goes. Yep. Okay, Cal is uh, at Washington. Washington is a 14-point favorite. Uh, I haven't seen Cal play. I did see some of Washington play. Uh, Washington, I think Jacob Eason is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think Washington now, I picked Oregon at the beginning of the season to win uh, Pac-12 North. I think Washington with Eason is the, yeah. they're the top-notch team in the Pac-12 right now. Yeah, he went uh, 27 for 36, 349 yards through the air. Um, he averaged 9.7 yards uh, per attempt and had four touchdowns, no interceptions, um, at, with a QBR of 95.2. That's really and, good for an opener. And two years ago, let's, let's point it out, before he got hurt at Georgia, he was lighting it up. Yeah. But then when he went out and, then, and Fromm came in, Fromm's just winning and winning. You, yeah. can't, you can't replace that. Right. So, you know, it was unfortunate for Eason that yeah. it happened the way it did, but Eason is one heck of a quarterback. I Eason, mean, so. Eason's going to have something to prove because mm -hmm. losing out, you know, to a guy younger than him, mm -hmm. and then he's, uh, I don't know, I, I don't remember what, what year he is, but he's looking to NFL scouts like, hey, yeah. you know, just because I got beat out, just like Jalen Hurts, just right. tons of well, QB. This whole weekend there were transfer quarterbacks that just lit it up yeah. everywhere. Almost so. almost all of them. I yeah. mean, the, the the top, you know, ranked ones. Fields, that, Hurts, Eason, uh, the list goes on. So, yeah. uh, but I got Washington covering 14. Yeah, I do too. Cal. Okay, uh, Minnesota is a three-point favorite at Fresno State. Fresno State. Did not beat USC, but they did cover the points. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they've got a young quarterback who was kind of they're breaking in, and he's making mistakes, but yeah. he's getting better. But they um, looked good. I they, mean, did, they did. They look bad. They didn't look in, bad at all. In in certain, you know, defensive line, uh, you know, they were flying around. Um, these are guys that uh, don't typically make the D one rosters, you know, nope. or Fresno, Northern California. And, and just all of California in general mm -hmm. usually have uh, high school recruits that all teams, nationally teams, Texas, Oklahoma, Alabama, um, Clemson, Ohio State, they're constantly in California looking yeah. for these kids. And a lot of them don't get picked up. So yep. they go to their local it's, schools, and Fresno State's one of those. It's the same way with Cincinnati. Yeah. Almost all of Cincinnati's roster is Ohio kids, which is what Fickle wanted because he wants people to have a sense of pride. Yeah. And he wants the kids from the area. Well, but these are kids that wanted to go to Ohio State. Yeah. But they weren't offered. So now even, they go to Cincinnati. Even a team like Akron. I mean, and not mm -hmm. to compare the two, but it just they're comparative in that some of them might just be a couple inches shorter for their posi yeah. position. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're any less talented right. or good. It's just that they're just a little bit. And some of that's the, that traditional size mm -hmm. is going out the window because a lot of guys are shining at undersized in their position. But um, but Fresno State's just one of those schools that can compete because of their the, mm -hmm. the talent base they have around them. In the preseason preview of the Big Ten and in – the video I did about Minnesota, I said Fresno State was going to beat Minnesota. I still believe that, so I'm going to take Fresno State. Yes, yeah, I'm taking three. Fresno State as well. Okay, and Minnesota Just, looked terrible yeah, in their game. They did they not look horrible. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right, we got two left. Texas A&M uh, at Clemson. Clemson opened at 19. Clemson. <laughs> Clemson. <laughs> Opened at uh, 19, there it's down to 18. like biting their yeah, I know, <laughs> whatever, right yeah. I mean, but uh, so it's Clemson right. is an 18-point favorite. 
uh, against Texas A&M. Man, when I saw this, when I saw the point spread 18, I immediately jumped online yeah. to bet this because uh, no way. I'm taking Texas A&M. There is no way that Clemson is going to beat them by more than 18 points. There yeah, is no way. And I didn't have this pulled up, but Texas A&M, Kellen Mond played really well. Um, he did. He looked he looked, he looked. looked really good. I don't good. know if you have his numbers there. I don't. Um, anyway. Yeah. I'm going to take Texas A&M. Yeah. I, I think that's a big number. Um, I know that Clemson is very talented. I know what they've got. Yep. Um, Travis Etienne is another... He's going to have a, a solid year this year. He was one of the better-looking running, running backs. Trevor Lawrence threw two picks against Georgia Tech. Yeah. I mean, that's not saying – he's still – I'm not yeah. saying anything about that. But but he's human, you know. And so um, if Georgia Tech can pick him off a couple of times, then other schools can too. So yeah. uh, I just think that – I mean, this, this game went down to the wire last year. Yeah. I mean, to think that it's going to be an 18-point victory for Clemson. I, I mean, I'm, and Clemson – I don't think Clemson's as good as last year because they lost all those guys on the on the defensive line, line yeah. all of them in the NFL. They're replacing them. I know they got great guys coming up and they're just reloading, but yeah. they're not quite as good as last year. And I think Texas A&M makes a game of this. Yeah, Kellen Mond just real quickly threw uh, 19. He connected on 19 passes of 27, 194 through the air, uh, three touchdowns, one interception. But his QBR was uh, 92, which is really mm -hmm. good. And then Isaiah Spiller, who was actually um, he was uh, committed to Oklahoma for a, a, quite a while and then uh, transferred, not transferred, but he um, flipped his commitment to Texas A&M. He's a, a true freshman, had seven carries for 106 yards. That's 15 yards per carry. Um, one of those was an 85-yard run, but, mm -hmm. um, I mean, their rushing attack is, is yeah. picking up, be yeah. becoming very good. Um, and then... Uh, they had one fumble, which you, you don't want to see that, um, but their defense played pretty well. They mm -hmm. had uh, nine tackles for loss, three sacks, um, and 27 solo tackles. They, they, they got uh, four interceptions, and, and that's, that's a really good game. Yeah. I mean, it, it is Texas State, but again, if, if these guys get that confidence boost that they mm -hmm. can compete... Um, I yep. believe they made a game of it last year against Clemson. It was, two point, it was like a two-point win for yeah. Clemson last year. Yeah, so it's early in the year. Mm -hmm. um, Clemson's not quite on a roll yet. Um, it'd be a tough game to catch Clemson later on in the year, I think, once yep. they are fully intact. They've got their defensive line is gelling. Um, but this is a prime time to catch them Absolutely. in the year. So uh, give me Texas A&M. Okay. Last game, to LSU. Cover. I think to Clemson cover. will win. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel. All right, LSU is a four and a half point favorite at Texas. Um, I'll just say, I mean, I watched the entire LSU game because, you know, I said before last year, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow they changed their offense. People have been skeptical. Was it going to be any good? It was good. Joe yeah. Burrow played the first half and one series in the second half and was done. He threw five touchdowns. Um, was just on fire, um, played phenomenal. Uh, I, th I still believe, I said last year, that maybe last year he wasn't a Heisman contender. This year I think he's going to be in the hunt because those numbers, he's still going to put up numbers. He, yeah. I mean, it, it is amazing how much better LSU looked. Yeah. And, and I get the competition or plan and everything, but um, I, I'm just – the media is in love with Texas and they're in love with Sam Ellinger. There's no way. I think LSU goes down there and wins by 12 or more. And, yeah. uh, so I've got LSU. Ellinger played a solid game, 28 of 38, 276 through the air, four touchdowns, no interceptions, QBR of 90. Um, and then Keontae Ingram had uh, 11 carries for 78 yards um, and one touchdown. So I can tell you Ellinger is not going to have those numbers against that LSU defense. I know. No, 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 no. no. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying he will yeah. um, I, because I do think that LSU will cover in this. Um, I think they'll win by at least a touchdown. I know it's going to be a crazy atmosphere down there mm -hmm. um, at DK Royal, but um, I just I think with LSU, um, somebody summed it up really well on the radio, and they said – LSU has more pro football players on their team uh, that will make it to the NFL than Texas does. Um, and that's all over the field. That's, yeah. that's just about every position group. So Texas has some, LSU just has more. They have I mean, a lot I, just, more, yeah. I, I think they have more, and I think um, this is going to be a battle, but I do believe that um, 
that LSU can win by at least a touchdown. During the LSU game, I, there was a point where, because LSU's offense is up-tempo, like no huddle, go, 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 go. And they were talking about, some of the announcers were talking about how the offensive line for LSU, they hate it. <laughs> they hate it because yeah. they were out of shape last year. Yeah. And so their strength and conditioning coach in the offseason is like, this is the offense you guys wanted. You, you want up-tempo, yeah. you want to score, you want to be a high-flying offense. And so they have worked those guys yeah. into the ground and gotten them in shape. And uh, th- at n- neither side of the ball did they look like they got tired last uh, yeah. in that game. So yeah. I'm excited. I cannot wait for that game. Yeah. I'm so excited. And I'll be honest with you. My son's birthday party is that day. Um, I'll catch Ohio State Cincinnati and some of the early games. And I'll get LSU Texas. The middle games, Texas A&M Clemson, I'm not going to be able to watch it. Yeah, I hate that. I- I'll probably DVR it and go back and watch it later. But... <laughs> Um, I'm going. I will DVR and watch it later. But um, I tried to. I do the best I can to watch as many games as possible. Uh, that 11 a.m. kickoff this past Saturday. I mean, there were so many games, and I'm sitting yeah. there. I've got a game on the TV, and I've got four games on the laptop, one on my phone, and I'm just going every which way, trying to watch every play. Yeah. And I it, it kind of burnt me out. <laughs> I and and a his break. son's my nephew. I'm going to the Oklahoma yeah. game that starts at six. The party's till six thirty. I'm gonna see if they can push that one back a little bit. But uh, <laughs> you're excused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, it was a great week. Great first week yeah. of college football. I'm excited that it's back. Yep. Um, first full week, I'll say, because week zero they they happen yeah. to throw a few at us. But um, it was a great yeah. week. There was yep. a lot of really good games. Um, and we're just excited that it's back. We're excited that you guys are watching. Please don't forget to subscribe yep. and uh, like hit, the that, video. hit that bell. Yeah, and share with your friends. Yep. Go over to Twitter and follow us. Yep. We'll have all those links directly And below if you us. like the new threads, you, yeah, you I'll can put get a link those. in the description. You can go and you can buy them if you want. You can get a t-shirt and, with two guys' names on them. And the video we're coming out with uh, it, within a day or so. Uh, we're giving away Madden 20, yep. your choice of PS4 or Xbox. Watch for that video. Uh, you'll see how you can get in to win that free. No, you don't have to buy anything or nothing. Yep. Just uh, uh, we just got some things you got to follow to to get get your name in drawing. And so. if you've made it this far into the video without clicking off because we've already picked all the games. Yeah. Uh, so at the beginning, that intro was just poking fun at ourselves. We don't take ourselves too seriously. And last week. Uh, We skipped completely over the Ole Miss. I had my notes for the Ole Miss game. We went right into Auburn, and for some reason, I associated Auburn with Ole Miss. And so it was... We know uh, Hugh Freeze was not a coach. Yeah, it was Matt Luke, who was was now at Ole Miss. Um, Hugh Freeze, who's now coaching at Liberty, if you saw him coaching from a hospital bed. Hospital bed, bed, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Which was pretty (laughs) funny. Um, and But things like Georgia Tech, uh, you know, getting a new coach, some of that stuff slips by us. Yeah. Um, it's just we, we cover every single game. So when you, as a fan of a team, happens to see that we mistake, you know, something mm-hmm. for your team, we're not sitting there yep. taking a microscope to every single team. We, we're just two fans that yep. try to scope the entire country. So yep. please forgive us. I mean, we, we try as hard as we can to get as much info out there as we can to pick as many games as we can, yep. um, and things will screw up. That's it. So again, subscribe, like our videos, uh, or yeah, and then uh, follow us on Twitter. And we will be back for week three. I mean, it's going to yeah. move along. I mean, yep. We'll be in week 12 before you know it. So keep watching. All right. Take care.